Hello everyone, we are back with a new lesson. There's a lot of lessons for today. I hope you enjoyed this Christmas gift or holidays week gift if you do not celebrate Christmas. Now, we have the cut effect and we are getting into the noise effect. And the noise effect is extremely powerful and it's going to give you the possibility to give noise to the clumps. If you put the noise, it's the intensity, noise scale, you can map through the strand of the clump, the intensity, noise frequency and noise correlation. Now, the intensity, let's put a value of one. For the noise scale, I'm going to map it to the tips and you can see how the tips are going to move. And the frequency, we're going to see that later. Let's put a value of 10. You can see how it's starting to move, a value of 40 and it's going to move towards each part of the clump. It's really important to say that the clumps are going to behave differently depending the, from the modifier CB count. If you have the correct amount of CB counts, you're going to see the correct amount of noise. If not, you're going to see how it behaves differently. And if you put the noise before adding the correct amount of CB counts, you will most probably probably need to rework all the system of the modifiers because it's going to behave differently. Be aware of that because it's really important to put the correct CB count modifier first before working on noises, either noise clumps, curves, or, cur or noise modifier here. Now, let's say that I have that value and let's start working on the frequency. Frequency is going to be the amount of waves that I will be able to see on each clump. So I'm going to put a value of one and you're going to be able to see how this breaks everything because I have a really, really high density here. So let's put a lower scale and you're going to be able to see how now I have a normal noise that it's working here. And maybe you are not seeing this one as powerful as it is, but I'm going to first show you why it could lead to a problem. Normally you have by default a value of five and you can see how this is looking quite different from what I see from with the really high value. So you can see here that it looks great to have a small noise, but that's not quite correct because when you put the value that it's higher, you can see the real definition of that noise that it's quite different. So when you pump up the CB counts, you're going to see that the result is different. So that's why you need to put the correct value. Now let's say that I have a, a smaller value, something like that with a value of five and let's put a lower value. You now can see that I have some waves that are more natural, but I will reduce even more the waves, maybe 1.15 is too much. I think 0.1 it's enough. And let's put a little bit more. And you can see here how I have a more natural look overall every part of the clumps. And why I'm telling you that this is extremely powerful to use Oh, also, first, correlation is going to be how much of this noise, this wave that I have here, is going to be able to pass towards the other wave. So it's going to be a more uh, like average noise over each clump. So if you put a correlation of 0.5, the noise is going to be less average. So it's going to relate more each clump. It's each noise between each clump. You can see here that the noise, it's more like the same over all the clumps, but if I put the correlation to zero, I have different noise on each clump. So that's how that one works. You can uh, put something like an average here. And let me explain why I'm telling you that this is important. I'm going to do a new clump system. I'm not going to explain more about these clump systems because I'm going to explain that on a later lesson, how to layer clumps. And I'm going to put on the second clump, this is the second clumping system that I had here, a value of two on the noise. I'm going to create a normal noise here and the frequency of 0.2. And let's put a higher density here, maybe six. And 
and a value of 10 maybe less that's too much value of 1 here and a noise of 5 so that's going to give you the possibility to have a more natural flow on the hair just with the noise on the clumps and if I want to add even more guides let's say a value of 10 so it's going to be really really small clumps you can see that the effect is even more natural over the layers over the clumps over here I can even add more layers but the noise is the one that it's affecting everything there and it's giving me a really really nice result I can even create a noise that does not affect the ends but just the tips maybe a value of 2 so it's going to be more natural and let's reduce a bit how much the clump affects so it's going to give me a really nice effect let's put more frequency and you can see here how the effect is more natural over the strand just with the noises on the clump so the noise on the clump it's a really really important pattern that you can actually control a lot and it's going to give you these variations that gave a nice feeling and it's going to randomly affect the groom and when you have a more, uh, bigger groom that you see here this just is the basic application of the technique you are going to be able to see how it does affect a lot you you can see this technique here applied where you are looking at here you can see some of the clumps that has some variations on the size you can see how the clumps move away just a little bit and this gives a really nice feeling over the clump and you can see it here this kind of effects can be achieved by the noise you can see how the noise affects some parts and some parts they're less affected that's how the noise can work over the clump and give you these amazing effects so that will be all for this lesson i hope you like it and this is how the noise works on the clumps